Halo, Assalamualaikum. Selamat pagi. Uh, kita dah uh, bercuti atau berada dalam lockdown dah berapa uh, minggu kan? So, uh, sesi MB Live bersama dengan saya, Zaini Ismail, Jutera Forensik Puan Gananda. Uh, bertukar siaran kali pertama pada 10 pagi. Saya minta maaf sebabkan... Uh, Rancangan saya nak buat FB Live setiap hujung minggu 10 pagi ni uh, tertunggak kan uh, sebabkan oleh masalah teknikal yang tak dapat saya elakkan sebab saya sendiri pun baru uh, berpindah ke Perancis Baru so saya baru je berpindah ke pejabat saya yang baru so ada banyak masalah uh, ialah terutama dalam keadaan MCO dan sebagainya kan so bagi mereka yang baru mengerti uh, Happy Life bersama saya, first time uh, pukul 10 pagi uh, ujung minggu uh, tolong bagi thumbs up kalau dapat dengar suara saya dengan jelas ok, tolong bagi thumbs up sikit ataupun komen di ruangan komen boleh dengar suara dengan jelas at least saya, sekurang-kurangnya saya tahu yang uh, anda semua boleh dengar suara saya ok, tak ada isu ok Uh, tolong komen eh Tolong komen Boleh dengar suara dengan jelas Boleh tengok uh, video ni dengan jelas Ataupun tolong bagi thumbs up Supaya saya tu anda boleh terima Siaran dengan jelas Sebelum kita mula dengan sesi kita pada pagi ni Okay Boleh eh tolong bagi thumbs up sikit Kalau boleh dengar suara saya Ataupun boleh Uh, terima Boleh tinggal video ni Alright, semua kata suara boleh jelas okay, Video jelas Alhamdulillah okay. So sebelum kita mulakan uh, sesi pada pagi ni Macam saya uh, bagi tahu pada permulaan uh, Bersiaran tadi Saya minta maaf banyak-banyak sebabkan uh, Uh, banyak perkara berlaku semasa dalam proses perpindahan daripada premis baru saya uh, daripada premis lama kepada premis baru uh, jadi ada benda yang delay uh, sepatutnya pasang internet lebih awal tapi tak apa nak pasang lepas disebabkan oleh MCO dan sebagainya ok jadi uh, saya mohon maaf lah terhadap perkara-perkara uh, tertentu jadi banyak benda yang saya sendiri nak buat tak dapat nak buat maka tertangguh lah beberapa minggu dan sepatutnya sesi saya bersama dengan Tuan Amrish sepatutnya dilakukan beberapa minggu lepas uh, mengalami masalah teknikal saya ingatkan boleh buat uh, tapi malamnya tak boleh sebabkan saya perlukan internet yang lebih laju yang lebih stable lah sebenarnya kata lain jadi tengah-tengah uh, dok baru nak mula, dok baru nak sembang tu uh, jam ok so saya harap pagi ni kita tak mengalami masalah yang sama InsyaAllah doa-doakan supaya semuanya ok aa, dengan baik Ok so seperti mana yang sebelum-sebelum ni Bagi mereka yang biasa mengikuti ataupun baru mengikuti Saya cuma minta satu tak payah bayar duit Tak payah aa, nak beli apa-apa ok aa, Cuma saya minta satu je tolong like share aa, video ni Ok terutama tolong share banyak-banyak video ni Supaya kita dapat berkongsi dengan lebih ramai orang Ok, uh, so bukan senang nak dapatkan tetamu jemputan saya Ok, masing-masing ada ada kekangan mereka sendiri Terutama pula nak kena buat kali kedua pula tu uh, Kan dah ambil masa dia Kemudian dah ambil masa hujung minggu dah pula Ok, dan ini ketika MCO baru di, dibuka ni Masing-masing mula dah sibuk kan Jadi agak suka untuk saya dapatkan tetamu-tetamu saya Jadi bila ada kesempatan macam ni Saya minta tolong banyak-banyak Tolonglah share video ni, ok? Tolong share banyak-banyak. Tolong like, ok? Supaya video ni lebih tersebar luas. Ok? Itu je saya punya permintaan. Ok? So, tolong share eh. Alright. So, jadi, uh, apa pula ni? Uh, so, tolong share, uh, kongsikan video ni dengan seramai, seramai orang yang yang boleh. Itu je yang saya, saya pohon, saya minta. Ok? So, kita ada um, uh, 
topik yang sangat menarik untuk kita bincangkan pada hujung minggu ni dan ramai orang mungkin kita tunggu-tunggu disebabkan oleh moratorium dan sebagainya ok ada banyak perkara yang tak boleh dilakukan nak buat macam ni kena tunggu dulu ok bank pun tengah masing-masing tengah tunggu dan lihat lah ok jadi semasa proses tunggu dan lihat ni kita nak buat persediaan ok sebab Uh, di apa tu di uh, digambarkan ataupun uh, di uh, diunjurkan bahawa terdapat banyak peluang terutama bagi mereka yang ingin melabur uh, terutama dalam sudut hak tanah okey uh, tetap peluang-peluang yang mungkin akan ada uh, menjelang akhir tahun ni okey tapi nak melabur dalam tanah kena buat kena buat persediaan. So, antara persediaan paling utama adalah persediaan pembiayaan hak tanah. Okay. Uh, jadi, kalau nak melabur dalam hak tanah, kena ada duit. Okay. Uh, so, biarpun ada banyak teknik, ada banyak kaedah yang boleh melabur dengan modal yang kecil, tapi macam mana pun, nak beli kena ada pembiayaan, kena ada uh, pinjaman hak tanah. Okay. So, hari ini saya berta- bersama dengan tetamu istimewa, uh, Tuan Ambridge Naik. Beliau merupakan uh, perunding pembiayaan hak tanah. Okay. Saya kenal Tuan Amris ni dah lama, tahun-tahun. Beliau pun banyak uh, bantu saya dalam mengendalikan kes-kes uh, berhubung dengan pembiayaan hak tanah. Jadi, uh, saya you know, uh, memanggil beliau atau menjemput beliau uh, untuk sama-sama berkongsi dengan kita. So, apa yang beliau tahu tentang pasaran pembiayaan yang mana mungkin kita boleh... Uh, ambil uh, kesempatan lah dengan kata lain. Uh, okay. Uh, take the advantage, take the knowledge supaya kita boleh bersedia apabila uh, industri ni dah bersedia untuk kita uh, dengan kata lain. Okay. So, tanpa melengahkan masa, saya menjemput Tuan Ambridge untuk bersama dengan kita. Uh, okay. Sekejap ya. Eh. Saya kena buang tiga ni sekejap. Hello, good morning. Hello. Morning. <laughs> How, How are, are you, you bro? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Ah, uh, fine, I'm good. Okay. Uh, terima kasih kerana bersama dengan uh, saya pada pagi ni. I know that you are sibuk semua. So, <laughs> thanks again. <welcome. laughs> okay. So, uh, thanks again. So, apologize. Minta maaf awal-awal dulu sebab hari tu kita punya plan Uh, togetherness tu tak tak dapat nak dilakukan because of the technical issues so hopefully hari ni everything went smooth so uh, you can share uh, together with all of us what's going on so apa yang berlaku dalam pasaran uh, pembiayaan hartanah ketika ini so uh, I give you the chance to go bro <laughs> okay, all right. So, uh, good morning, guys. Good, good morning, morning, guys. Everyone. Good morning, everyone. Actually, uh, Actually uh, uh, first of all, uh, I nak terima kasih dengan ID. Okay, because menjemput saya uh, for uh, this session lah, live session. Okay, because I think uh, pembiayaan hartanah ni topik yang sangat penting. Okay, I rasa ramai uh, nak tahu uh, what is uh, what is the current situation and how was it like before and maybe after. So, I rasa uh, I boleh dapat sharing uh, sebesar sedikit uh, berkenaan dengan pembiayaan hak tanah. So, I harap kita sama-sama boleh menimba ilmu lah. Eh? So, I think uh, I, I already saw somebody came in and then or some of it uh, uh, I think most of it are all your clients lah, Tuan Zaidi. Okay, uh, which, which you have referred to me actually. So, I'm happy to see them there. And uh, yeah, selamat pagi and also selamat berpuasa, berpuasa guys. Okay, so I think without wasting any more time, I think uh, let's go into the slides. Is it okay, Rosaidi? You have anything? Okay, well, so you have a slides. All right, all right. right. Let's uh, let's get you in. I share the screen. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. So. Right. Tak masuk lagi. Okay. Okay. Tak Can masuk. see? Okay, apa? All right, quite nice. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the topic today is all about pembiayaan hartanah semasa uh, 
and also selepas MCO and all, I, I just tambah sikit COVID-19 lah eh, because we don't know when COVID-19 is going to end actually. So anyhow, yeah, I can, yeah, anyhow, so just I boleh sharing sikit lah eh, maybe uh, semasa MCO ni, uh, semasa COVID ni, what are the things that happening. Okay, so if you can see below there, that's my website, company website, Matrix Switch Solutions and also my personal website dekat bawah. Alright, so first of all eh, first of all sebelum I go into the topic, now let me just share to you where I come from, who am I and what I do. Okay, now first of all, uh, I nak uh, cerita sikit pasal my company. My company name is uh, Matrixive Solutions Number Hard. Okay, short form dia panggil MS. And uh, kita ni sebenarnya dah beroperasi selama 9 tahun. Okay, kita dah ada uh, sebanyak 50 agent lah. Eh. So what I hear from my recruiting director, I rasa mungkin uh, selepas ni akan ada lebih ramai lagi yang nak join lah. Okay, so we are looking at to add on another more uh, 50 of them. And uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, there are people to join in lah. Alright, so kepakaran kita ni sebenarnya dalam bidang sub-sale, refinance dan juga auction. Okay, when you look at uh, sub-sales, okay, I think, I believe ramai yang tahu what is sub-sales. Refinance is pembiayaan semula dalam bahasa Melayu and also they call it as remortgage or some of them they call it as top-up loan as well. Okay, and auction is of course lelong lah. Okay, so these three section are the the part that yang kita ni selalu apa orang kata uh, the, the 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 segment uh, that we are good in. Okay, then the next is uh, sebenarnya kita ni meliputi kawasan area Selangor, KL dan juga Negeri Sembilan. Okay, so of course uh, tiga area ni adalah market yang terbesar bagi saya lah ya eh, untuk uh, market apa untuk property punya industri. Tapi that doesn't mean that kita tak buat area Sepera ataupun area Melaka uh, kita still buat juga. Okay, tapi uh, there are some uh, numbers of my agents are uh, the one who's getting cases from there. So, um, yeah, if, if sources are there, then memang kita boleh buat lah. Okay, tapi major... So this is the main, basically this is the main area lah. This yeah, is the main yeah. coverage area. Yes, yes, this is the main coverage area lah, I would say. Okay, because we are much more familiarized and also because when you look at banks, uh, some banks, they, they don't uh, do cross-border cases. So because of that itself, it will be a restriction for us to do our sales as well. So, but yeah, not all the banks, they are just certain banks lah. So that's why we cover the place that uh, yang kita rasa lebih selesa. Okay, so the next is, uh, sebenarnya kita ni ada hubungan rapat dengan banks dan juga valuers. Now, before I touch further, now just let me uh, give you a little bit of picture apa sebenarnya kita orang ni, okay. Now, kita ni sebenarnya adalah mortgage consultant. Okay, so kita ni sebenarnya antara client dan juga banks. Okay, so kita mewakili client untuk submit loan kepada banks. Okay, sebenarnya klien ni bila dia dah booking rumah, dia nak submit loan. Okay, so kita ni sebenarnya we save the client's time. Tak perlulah klien tu pergi satu-satu-satu bank untuk pergi survey dia punya package lah, rate lah and all that. So, they, they, we just cut off their time. So, basically when they come to us, kita ni sebenarnya kita advise atau kita bagi consultation, uh, tengok macam mana profile dia semua and you know banks mana yang kita patut submit. Okay, dia nak sama ada dia nak Islamic loan ke, conventional ke, 100% loan ke ataupun dia nak full flexi or term loan or something like that. So, we basically consult the clients and see what the clients want and we submit to the banks which is suitable to the client's need. Uh, so, itu yang sangat penting sebab sometimes bila client tu walk in sendiri pada bank, sometimes bank tak berapa tahu macam mana nak tengok client profile dia. So, we basically mitigate ataupun kita, uh, kita apa, kita summarize dia punya client profile and we send it to the banks. Okay, and lagi pun kita tak send pada satu bank saja. Okay, as what I've written in the slide, kalau you tengok submission pada banks pada masa yang sama, we actually submitting to a few banks at once. Okay, kenapa? Hmm. Sebab setiap bank ni dia ada guidelines-guidelines dia tertentu and then dia pun ada package-package dia orang tertentu. Okay, some banks dia bagi rate rendah, some banks dia bagi rate tinggi. Some banks yang bagi rendah tu dia ada flexi, tapi yang bagi rate tinggi tu tak ada flexi. So, hmm. it depends on the clients ni. So, that's why kita submit to at least two to three banks, at least kita ada demand power untuk fight rate yang cantik untuk client. Okay, so hubungan rapat dengan banks dan valuers ni sebenarnya, you see, to be a mortgage consultant, you need to have good networking lah. Okay, one of the networking is Tuan Zaidi lah. <laughs> Okay, besides that you can add valuers and also uh, good bankers by, by your side. Okay, valuers ni sebab ken kenapa kita kena ada hubungan rapat ni sebab you see valuers ni uh, they basically get a, a property valuation, verbal property valuation for you. So you sebenarnya kena ada contact dengan orang supaya at least you boleh dapat tinggi sikit value. Okay, of course hmm. bukan bukan sebab kita dapat, bukan 
it, it's not because of the hubungan rapat that's why kita dapat value tinggi it's not the only thing tapi of course faktor-faktor lain juga penting lah eh. of course ada uh, the property areas okay the renovation details and blah 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 okay tapi bila kita tengok on the bank side we need to make sure that we have good contacts with the banks because sebenarnya bukan semua banks okay I I just generalize lah eh. not all the bankers from all the banks are willing to do your case uh, okay kebanyakannya bila kita tengok um, those golongan yang siapa nak apply loan rumah yang Uh, yang 90,000 ataupun 80,000 kebanyakannya bila dia orang walk in dekat bank selalunya bankers tu tak layan lah eh hey, I'm not saying all the bankers but uh, uh, most of it okay because sometimes mungkin banks branch tu dia tak buat case kecil okay dia selalunya accept case maybe 300,000 ke atas so it depending on the particular branch you see so untuk client identify branch mana yang boleh buat tu yang buat dia orang susah So when they come to us, we are the one basically we know that which banks in which branch that can do this kind of loan and that kind of loan. So we are much more well versed on the particular banks lah. Okay, now, kerja-kerja kita orang ni, okay, nampak memang comprehensive, it's a like a one-stop solution kind of thing. Okay, uh, I just sambung balik masa kita dah sign, masa kita dah buat submission pada banks and all that. When the banks given an approval, then kita akan kumpul approval details tu, kita bagi kepada client. And then client tu dia akan accept tengok bank mana yang dia nak accept. Okay, kita akan bagi suggestion kita. And then once dah accept, kita akan jumpa dia. And then it will proceed for the letter of signing. And then kita akan guide hmm. client sampai SMP, loan agreement, and all the thing until the client gets the key lah. Okay, now all these things. Kalau kalau okay. tak, kalau kalau tak ada peguam pun jual bantu kan? Kata saya. Yes, 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 yes. Of course, kita ada service juga daripada, untuk peguam. Uh, I mean, convincing and all that lah. So hmm. yeah, we have the whole one-stop solution as well. Okay, so yeah. So kerja-kerja kita orang ni memang sebenarnya kita menyenangkan klien. Okay, I believe that most of them who is watching this video pernah jadi my client as well. So I think they know how the service is. And service kita orang ni sebenarnya no charges. Okay, so service kita adalah zero charges. Kosong, kita tak charge apa-apa. Percuma. Ha, percuma, ha, kan. <laughs> sebenarnya kita ni bukan buat kerja amal lah. Eh. <laughs> okay, but... But the thing is, it's zero charges is because we don't charge any single cent from the client. Okay, tak pernah I charge and tak pernah kau my staff sesiapa pun yang charge juga. Hmm. Okay. Tapi, tapi kalau dia orang bayar, kita terima je lah kan? Ah, yang tu, I tak, <laughs> yang tu I tak terima sebagai bayaran. I terima sebagai derma lah, eh, derma. Okay. <laughs> Minum okay, sampai... tinggalari lah, minum tinggalari, belanja, 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 Yes, exactly. So, bila kita jumpa klien untuk signing letter offer semua, klien ni dia sometimes dia akan ajak lah kan, nak, nak makan ke apa kan, nak minum ke apa lah. Time-time tu lah eh, you make sure that, you know, kita ni lapar, you know, at that time kita bantai kau. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, I think ramai uh, maybe fikir yang maybe, kenapa servis kita orang ni free charges, zero charges, takkan dia buat kerja amal kan. So, actually sebenarnya charges kita ataupun fees, Komision kita ni dapat daripada pihak-pihak tertentu. Okay, contohnya daripada pihak bank ataupun pihak lawyers and all that. So we get the charge, we get the fees, we get the commission all from the other other parts of the of the source. Okay, sebenarnya kita tak kacau apa-apa belah client. Okay, so we give consider a free comprehensive one stop uh, solution for the client. Uh, okay, so I move on to the next slide. Okay, sebenarnya kita kerja ada tiga prinsip utama. Okay, of course setiap pekerjaan, okay, setiap uh, business we need to have principles while we work. Okay, so I think the main three principles that we have is responsive, efficient and aggressive. Okay, short form is REA. Uh, REA is not real estate agent eh. Okay, so <laughs> I think I think ramai agent bila tengok ni, tengok REA tu real estate agent. Okay, which is not for us lah. Okay, for us it's responsive. Okay, why we say responsive? Because I always believe Uh, sebenarnya responsif ni adalah responsibility. Okay, selalunya bila client message ataupun WhatsApp ataupun you know ask for updates, kita kena sentiasa reply orang. Okay, sometimes bila client call ataupun property agent call, kita tak dapat angkat. Tapi we are always there to reply our messages lah. Okay, and also efficient. Efficient in the sense of bila kita dapat case, kita make sure that kita pick up case tu on time. And kita submit pada bank-bank yang tertentu. Okay, we don't, uh, example, bila kita dapat kes tu hari ni, tak adalah kita nak submit sampai dua, lepas dua minggu aja. Okay, we are not like that. Okay, we make sure the time frame is very important. Okay, especially for cases like auction. Okay, those are very, very sensitive cases. So, memang time frame tu penting lah. Alright, so the last is aggressive. Aggressive is because we are always hunger of case. Kita ni setiasa kelaparan case. Okay, tak cukup. You bagi I 20, 30, 40 pun tak cukup. 
Ah, tapi masalahnya sekarang ni nak dapat 40 pun tak boleh bos. <laughs> okay, looks like, looks like the COVID is much more aggressive than me lah. Aduh. So, so anyway, yeah, we are aggressive in the sense of case kecil, case besar macam mana pun kita tetap buat juga. Okay, kita tidak memilih case. Okay, so we finance, subsidy macam mana pun kita tak buat. Okay, if we can't do it, then of course kita ada reason. Uh, we, we have our reasoning as well lah. Okay, so. Now, we back jump to our our topic hari ni iaitu mortgage semasa MCO, okay? Now, what happened during this time eh? So, sekarang ni it's always, almost already after MCO but it's not fully yet, it's just PKPB, right? So, let me just share with you about what happened on the March and April, okay? Now, at this point of time, sub-sale and auction cases ini semakin menurun hampir separuh tau. Okay, daripada February to March, Okay, approximately if I'm going to get like 20 cases in a month, I'm only getting only 10 cases. Okay, tiba-tiba dia jatuh. Okay, I'm not sure why. Okay, I think most of them uh, before the lockdown, most of them already speculate that there will be a lockdown. Okay, bila kita tengok Facebook, tiba-tiba ramai pula minta lockdown lah, lockdown lah, I think for the past one, two weeks. Okay, so because of that, there's a lot of uh, cases have been reduced. Kenapa? because agent hatanah tidak boleh bergerak. Okay, it's our real estate agent, kawan-kawan saya memang tak boleh nak pergi dapatkan sales. Okay, memang kesian. Okay, because at that time, ada salah satu my agent, dia contact I and then bila I, I, sebab dia, I dah tolong check value untuk case dia. Then I minta bro, case bila nak dapat kan. So, dia call I balik dan dia kata, ah, bro, tak boleh lah bro, client tu dia cancel booking. Dan I cakap, kenapa pula cancel booking? Dia kata, tak lah, client tu tidak yakin. Okay, so pembeli tu tidak yakin. So, I said kenapa tak yakin? So, he share to me a little bit of things lah. Dia kata tak yakin sebab dia rasa macam kalau sekarang ni masa-masa lockdown, takut mungkin dia orang kehilangan pekerjaan. Dia orang takut mungkin gaji dia orang kena potong. So, bila dia orang nak commit untuk housing loan tertentu tu, dia orang takut dia orang tak boleh bayar. So, I think it's quite, how to say, it's quite reasonable lah dia orang punya concern. Betul, ada banyak uncertainty during this time. Betul. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, to be frank, uh, I rasa my agent pun actually uh, dia orang tak berapa uh, how to say, dia orang tak berapa pushy lah, pushy on that particular thing. So, I think that agent have been doing a good job. Dia orang pun tak ada push lah. Okay, tapi yang penting sekarang ni, actually agent hatana ni is actually the most important part of the whole uh, property industry. Okay, because I feel Yes, the whole ecosystem actually because when you look at sub-sales, sub-sales are the one is generating the most in the in the in the in the mortgage, uh, especially in the country. So I feel tanpa dia orang ni, tanpa dia orang bergerak ni susah. Sebab bila dia orang tak bergerak, dia orang tak dapat buyer, buyer tak dapat booking, dia orang tak dapat refer buyer tu pada saya. So I pun tak adalah makan pasir je lah kan. Nak makan apa bos? <laughs> okay, so I'm very uh, 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 sad on behalf of agent Hatana as well. Kesian dia orang kes-kes yang booking tak boleh nak collect booking tiba-tiba kena cancel okay I'm, I'm actually there's a lot of big cases and there's a lot of cases that tak boleh tau so buyer pula dia minta tunggu bro tunggulah bro lepas MCO nanti bila rumah tu ada lagi bila ada rezeki then hmm. I pun you know kalau belilah. rumah tu ada lagi lah kalau rumah tu ada lagi lah kalau tak ada kalau Tuan Zaidi jumpa rumah tu habis lah okay <laughs> So and then one more thing is jangkaan penurunan harga rumah. Okay, these things as well. I had, I had because during the MCO, I had a lot of uh, uh, apa Zoom uh, video call with a lot of uh, property agent, a lot of leaders actually. So bila orang cerita pada I benda ni, jangkaan penurunan harga rumah. This is what speculation ataupun the assumption that buyer ada sebenarnya. Sebenarnya hmm. benda ni penurunan harga rumah for me, I feel harga rumah is actually a, a rumah is property, right? So property is an asset. So assets for me, uh, for property, always appreciate. Okay, it 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 it, it won't depreciate. Okay, it, if it's dep- depreciating, that is maybe certain to a certain factors. Mungkin very rare lah, very rare benda tu. Okay, tapi locality lah. Yes, correct. Tapi when you look at when you look at uh, uh, the major majority of the packet, I think selalunya harga rumah ni sentiasa meningkat. Mungkin apa yang I boleh jangka jangka is because Mungkin property ni, dia punya harga rumah tak m- mungkin tak akan meningkat dengan lebih tinggi. Okay, maybe when you look at yearly increment, maybe it talk, take, it takes about maybe 10% the previous years. Well, maybe at this point of time, it takes about maybe what 6% or maybe 5%. Uh, so, peningkatan tu mungkin akan ada control dekat situ. 
Okay, so mungkin dia tak akan meningkat dengan lebih tinggi. Okay, so penurunan harga rumah ni, ya, ya Zadi. Nah, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Ya, yeah. so penurunan harga rumah ni actually to be frank, actually sebenarnya uh, harga rumah ni is being set by the owner. Okay, owner yang nak jual rumah. So sekarang ni, untuk owner yang jual rumah yang saya cakap tadi agent cancel, apa yang buyer cancel booking tu. So owner rumah tu mungkin dia sedih lah. Sebab dia mentang-mentang dia nak jual rumah. He can have all the reason in the world dia nak jual rumah. Tapi tiba-tiba bila buyer tu cancel booking, dia kena cari buyer baru. Bila nak cari buyer baru, tak dapat and then semua buyer tu nak tunggu lepas MCO saja. So he feels that maybe I can buang harga. So bila buang harga tu, harga rumah akan jatuh. So actually the, the, the concept is actually more towards like a buang harga concept. Okay because uh, sooner or later uh, we look at selepas MCO, if let's say people is losing their job ataupun when people have their salary cut, eligibility orang ataupun kemampuan orang untuk apply loan rumah tu tak boleh dapat macam dulu. Okay, bila eligibility tu dah kurang, maka owner nak jual rumah tinggi-tinggi pun a bit quite tough. Okay, walaupun owner nak jual within the market value. Okay, so most probably, most probably it's going to be a buyer's market uh, more than before. So, you know, owner pun tak boleh nak cuzi saya. I, I call it, for, for me, bagi saya, oh. saya, for, for me, I call it bagi saya, uh, I think the industry is doing some correction. Yes, because yes, for the yes. past uh, for the past few years uh, ada banyak apa uh, over value property so some of this over value property dia bukanlah kata harga tu turun uh, bukanlah value dia turun yang turun tu mungkin harga tapi value remain the same Betul. so berlaku correction terhadap harga so harga tu i think lepas ni will be match uh, yeah. with the with the demand and uh, we'll be matching balik dengan uh, dengan the actual um, consensus of the industry betul, uh, so betul. banyak uh, banyak player sebelum-sebelum ni terutama developer yang letak harga yang agak tinggi uh, okay with with a, with a lower value but higher price sebab dia tahu demand tu ada so now when the demand go back to normal ataupun the demand uh, correct itself, uh, so kita akan dapat harga yang uh, lebih sustainable lah dengan kata lain. Betul, 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 betul. Yeah. When, when, when you look at uh, undercon, when you touch about undercon, which I also feel the same lah. But sometimes undercon pricing, I feel not sometimes lah, most of the time undercon pricing ni dia sebenarnya uh, bagi harga Yahudi orang panggil kan. So I feel it's quite it's quite high price lah sebab dia tak ikut kepada market valuation. I think because most probably dia orang set price tu based on future market price which Betul. which also which also not reasonable lah sebab you know they they have their own costing and all that they put everything inside. You know the 10% pun diletak kat dalam, the the lawyer fee semua dia letak kat dalam and then dia they, they come out and they said you just need to pay just 1000. So you know So yeah, for undercon you look at long term, it's fine lah. But at this point of time, most probably unit-unit yang tak terjual tu mungkin orang akan uh, buang harga juga. So just watch out lah guys. Kalau you... Betul. So watch out lah guys. Kalau memang you guys memang real real uh, nak beli rumah mana lah tahu SP setia ke Eco ke kan. Uh. So I don't know. Big 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 uh, developers most probably orang tak akan buang harga macam tu lah. Tapi when you look at the small developers nak cari makan bersusah, so most probably they might uh, they might they might they might. Uh, put the price rock bottom lah. Okay, yeah. so yeah, and also one more thing is uh, uh, like what you say lah ya, yeah, sebab bila owner tu sebab when you see, owner ni sebenarnya kalau ikutkan dia memang plan nak jual rumah sometimes uh, itulah dia nak jual rumah, dia tak boleh jual rumah so bila buyer nak beli pun tak boleh sebab loan is not going to be easy from now on. Okay, uh, so that is the most toughest thing. Okay, loan is not going to be easy from now on. Okay, now bila I move on to the next slide, refinance cases ni semakin meningkat. Uh, so when I touch about refinance, ramai orang tak tahu what is refinance. To be really frank, okay, because memang bila I posting my videos about refinance dalam Facebook I, sebenarnya I dapat tahu sebenarnya ramai, ramai sangat yang tak tahu what is refinance all about. Okay, sebenarnya refinance ni, as what I mentioned earlier, is actually pembiayaan semula. Okay, it's, it's, it's actually you are trying to take another loan to cover Uh, another few loans. loans. Yeah, the old loans. Okay, I boleh bagi contoh, maybe just a simple example. Katakan seorang ni, dia ada dalam 300 loan amount balance dalam CIMB. 
Okay, and then dia pergi check value dekat Maybank, dia dapat value tu dalam RM400,000. Contohlah, okay, that is maybe after 5 to 6 years lah. Okay, uh, maybe 10 years, I don't know. So, daripada RM400,000 Maybank tu, dia apply loan 90%. So, bila 90% from 400000 is how much? RM360,000. Okay, hmm. so daripada RM360,000 loan ini, Maybank dia akan settle CMB RM300,000. So, bila dia settle CMB RM300,000, the balance is how much? RM60,000. RM60,000. So, RM60,000 ni sometimes dia boleh gunakan untuk apa? Settle dia punya hutang kereta yang maybe balance tinggal dalam RM30,000 ataupun mungkin dia nak pergi settle PTPTN dia tinggal dalam RM20,000 or whatsoever lah. Okay, dia is consider what we call it as loan. Kita satukan kita punya loan. We compress our loan. Okay, I think most of them fail to understand this that refinance benda ni wujud. Okay, sebab dia orang ada rumah, dia orang tak tahu dia boleh refinance and dia orang pergi ambil step salah iaitu ambil personal loan. Okay, so personal loan is not something that what you should do as a as a first choice tau. So, if you have a house, yeah, refinance is better because you are taking as per housing loan rate, not the personal loan rate. So, yeah, when you talk about refinance, of course, kita ada guru sebelah saya ni. Okay, he's the guru of all the refinance. Okay, he have been referring cases from day one to me lah eh, daripada tahun bila, 2014 sampai sekarang. Okay, it's nearly six beautiful years with you, Tuan Zaidi. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, refinance but, but not, not all but again to stress to the penonton untuk bagi uh, apa tu uh, uh, peringatan sikit eh uh, ini bukan satu cara untuk selesaikan semua masalah lah. so it depends on your case okay Betul. case by case basis okay apa yang kita bincangkan ni is more like a general thing janganlah pula lepas ni pergi ambil wey aku ada rumah wey okay let's refinance beramai-ramai Uh, tak semestinya eh. So, dia bergantung pada keadaan dan situasi. Okay. So, apa yang Amrish beritahu tadi tu contoh. Okay. So, uh, kena buat kiraan dulu. Kena tengok mana satu yang lebih berbaloi. Sometimes, kita refinance untuk kurangkan baki hutang. Okay. Yeah. Tak tak semua case kita refinance untuk ambil hutang baru. So, ada case yang kita refinance untuk kecilkan hutang lama supaya you have a better cash flow. Okay, it depends. Dia bergantung pada keadaan dan situasi. Okay. Dan ada juga masa yang kita refinance untuk pendekkan tempo loan. Uh, okay, contoh macam uh, you punya loan tinggal 25 tahun. Okay, bayar katalah RM1,300 sebulan. Bila kita tengok rate yang terkini, yang terbaru, kita buat kiraan. Okay, kalau kita refinance ke 15 tahun, kita bayar sama dia dah bulan. Uh, okay, so kita dah jimat 10 tahun. So instead of paying for the house for 25 more years, kita bayar untuk 15 tahun je lagi. Okay, tapi bayar bulanan dia tetap sama. Lebih kurang sama. Tak membeban dengan kita. Tapi tempoh masa dah jadi pendek. So, refinance ni dia general terms. Okay, dia boleh buat macam-macam dengan refinance. Terutama refinance rumah. So, dia bergantung pada matlamat kita lah. Okay, so proceed bro. Yep. Yeah, you, you are right lah boss. Betul. Uh, because when you look at refinance, memang you kena ada motif. You need to have your objective why you refinance. Sebab, Memang tak guna kalau kita refinance ni simpan cash tak tahu nak buat apa pun tak guna juga. Okay, sure. so because at the end of the day it's going to be another loan. You see, so it's very important to know the objective of loan lah. Alright, so refinance cases ni meningkat because of exposures uh, dalam Facebook. Uh, I, I quote this, okay, sifu-sifu hatanah. Okay, I know you don't like me using the sifu hatanah word. Tapi yeah, this is what the people call. Okay. So, this, these people have been coming out in Facebook videos and live videos and they're wrong cheater pasal uh, macam how, what, how important cash is right now. So, I think because of that, ramai dia rasa penting lah eh, untuk uh, to keep the cash at this moment. And um, yeah, so sometimes people refinance ni, dia dapat duit tu, dia nak simpan sebab to at least go through the rainy days. Okay, maksudnya masa-masa kecemasan ataupun apa, dia boleh guna duit tu. Alright. I have, I have this one. I, I have this one term. I yeah. have this one term that I call um, apa? Sama ada you nak refinance ke, sama ada uh, you nak ambil personal loan ke, sama ada you nak beli tanah ke. Whatever you want to do financially, uh, benda tu tak salah. Okay. Uh, whatever lah, you nak beli tanah ke, nak beli emas ke, you nak refinance, whatever not, benda tu tak salah. Yang salah adalah kaedah dia. The technique that you are doing yang salah. Okay. You can buy a car. Okay. You beli-beli uh, kereta. Beli kereta tak salah. Tapi ramai orang beli kereta yang salah. I always tell that. You know. You beli rumah tak salah. Tapi ramai orang beli rumah yang salah. Okay. 
You ambil loan, you ambil pembiayaan untuk beli hartanah tak salah. Tapi ramai orang ambil pembiayaan ataupun loan yang salah. Okay, so be very careful. Hati-hati, okay. Terutama bila dapat uh, pandangan atau bila dapat uh, this new knowledge daripada orang-orang, you know, uh, dari tak kisah nak pergi di sifu ke siapa ke. Okay, uh, kena tengok diri kita dulu. Okay. Selalu tengok matlamat kita, okay, apa yang dibincangkan tu tak salah. Tapi kadang-kadang kita buat yang salah. Okay, sebab kita tak adapt ataupun kita tak buat ikut kita punya acuan. Kita buat ikut orang lain punya acuan. You know, uh, kita nak makan curry pub, okay. So, kita buat sepatutnya dapat curry pub, uh, tapi kita dapat pie. Okay, uh, sebab curry pub dengan pie tu lebih kurang sama kan, uh, bukan macam tu. Okay, so nak nak buat kalipat tu tak salah. Tapi kita, cara kita buat tu salah, kita end up getting a pie instead of getting a kalipat. Okay, sebagai contoh lah. Okay, so kena hati-hati bila bila ada yang bagi pendapat atau pandangan. Okay, sebab selalunya pendapat atau pandangan ni is very generalized. It's generalization. Okay, kita refinance. Dia open-ended. Ha, dia bahaya. Refinance tu ada banyak cara. Ada banyak kaedah. Banyak tujuan refinance. Okay, refinance tu hanya the term yang kita guna. Macam sekarang lah, kita bincang pasal refinance. Tapi ada banyak. Okay, so uh, proceed bro. Tuan Amri nanti yeah. dia akan explain lebih lanjut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very, very, uh, how to say, uh, memang uh, such a good logical thing lah. Okay, you have mentioned tadi. So yeah, uh, macam bagi tahu tadi, okay, because cash ni memang uh, kalau you simpan, kalau you tak tahu nak buat apa, you nak simpan pun tak guna lah. Okay, so refinance is the most important thing. At the end of the day, it's loan. You are, you are going to serve an interest out of it. It's not zero interest. So, you need to know kenapa you nak refinance. Okay, and then um, when you look at point number dua, I tulis kat situ moratorium. Uh, moratorium ni adalah topik-topik yang sangat hangat lah eh, semasa COVID ni. Okay, masa MCO ni. Eh. Sebab I rasa most of them, I can, I believe lah kan, eh, mungkin 95% of them sebenarnya tak tahu pun maksud moratorium ni. Until PM kita, until PM kita announce what is moratorium, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think most of, I think this is the most uh, uh, searched in Google actually what is moratorium all about. So, moratorium is something like a deferment, okay? Deferment ataupun dipanggil sebagai penangguhan loan. Okay, yeah, there are issues that some other interest is still chargeable ataupun compounded interest to still chargeable or not. I rasa issue-issue semua dah selesai, okay? I don't want to talk to the body. Tapi moratorium ini, I think, is one thing that what I feel the MOF have come out with uh, a, a very good uh, thing. Okay, because I rasa mungkin look at other countries, I rasa tak ada pun moratorium ni. Tapi look at our country, Malaysia, Okay, we are actually still enjoying during our our MCO. Okay, you can see people cooking, you can see people sharing things. Okay, so most countries are actually don't even have those kind of time. But when we have it, I think we have to bersyukur ataupun we have to. This, this is a blessing in disguise. Exactly, exactly blessing in disguise. Because I I, I did spoke to to one of my I, I did spoke to my father and also father-in-law regarding this. And uh, yeah, they have mentioned that in their history, tak pernah ada moratorium benda ni. So, this is something that which is very apa, lucky lah. I'm looking at this generation and we still have something Betul. that they don't have last time. So, sebagai contoh, sebagai contoh, I ada beberapa klien yang bila kita buat kiraan, dia boleh settlekan, uh, bukan saja hutang biasa, tapi dia boleh settlekan rumah dia, hutang rumah dengan moratorium. Betul, betul. Okay, why? Because why? Because you have that extra excess money already. So yeah, that is something that actually gives you a breathing breathing space. You see. So I think benda tu sangat penting. Okay. So like it or not like it, some of them they rasa macam, eh, I nak ambil moratorium, mata nak ambil. For me, I feel whatever given, just take lah. Okay. Don't care however rich you are or however poor you are, whatever. Tapi kalau moratorium ni dah ada, kalau boleh just accept saja. Because this is something that you need at this moment. Because you will never know, you will never know when is the rainy days. Seriously. So, so moratorium ni sebenarnya, what I feel eh, what I feel is actually the country is trying to reduce unemployment. Okay, because when so, unemployment comes into the picture, ramai orang yang ada loan ni, ya yeah, betul, dia tak boleh nak bayar loan kereta, loan rumah semua, dia tak boleh nak bayar. So, bila tak boleh nak bayar, it may go back to those days in 1998 where where people are actually committing suicide. Okay, this is yeah. what I heard from my, from my, from my, you know, uncle and all that. So, yeah. kita tak nak benda tu jadi balik. So, I think because of what the lesson have learned from those days. And I feel moratorium ni, bila dia bagi benda ni dapat, it gives that breathing space lah. 
Eh, so I think daripada kita pergi jat sama ada nak ambil tak nak ambil I think that just depends to you lah eh Kalau you nak ambil, ambil tak nak ambil Then it's fine Tapi lah. macam tapi macam golongan macam kita, kita kapur je semua Orang bagi yes, free, kita ambil lah Yes, betul You you just throw a 20 cent on the ground pun I ambil juga, bos <laughs> Okay, but when you look at the government sectors When you look at the government sectors Okay, most probably kalau dia orang nak ambil moratorium ni Mungkin it, it, it may be in a way that they don't want to take it Why? Because Uh, looking like dia orang punya gaji and all that it looks to be stable so you know maybe they feel that I, I don't need to take it lah so I don't know dia depends dia ada masing-masing dia ada reason tertentu lah kenapa dia ambil tak ambil okay so what I feel is refinance cases ni meningkat because they accepted moratorium when they accept moratorium you basically have that 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 space and 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 the commitment of you have been paying monthly to your loans example maybe dalam RM5,000 or something like that basically can be used for something else right now Okay, and maybe you can settle off your loans. Okay, which is your car loan, your PTPTN or whatsoever. You can save it because six months. You're talking about six months. Easily, kalau you punya loan is 2,000, you got about six months, you like six times two is about what? 12,000 already, about correct or not? 12,000, yeah. Yeah, so, so, so your, your, your diploma <coughs> cost you know, could be at least about 15 to 20,000. I don't know. You're settling off 12,000. Hmm. Don't you think you're already... Boleh settle credit card debt, you know? Betul. Betul. A lot of smaller loans... Dulu pinjam kawan 500 tak bayar. This is the time you bayar balik lah. <laughs> That's an important note actually. That's an important note. Ha, you, you, uh, you never know kan. You tak tahu that kawan for us 500 mungkin tak rapa. But for him that 500 is baby buying uh, you know baby milk or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Kan? Yeah, 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 exactly, so you hutang exactly. dia you bayar balik lah. You know? So don't you know you have this facility. Dia mungkin tak ada this facility. Kita tak tahu kan. Ha, you know. So mm-hmm. kalau siapa yang ada this facility dah dapat duit lebih tu simpan sikit and then dia ada balance tu pergi bayar you know hutang kawan whoever that you last time kata tak sempat ke atau apa kan you got like you know banyak masa lah to do all this so sepatutnya you can be done with Betul, betul. You see at the end of the day kalau you rasa you nak bayar balik hutang tu bayarlah tapi kalau macam mana moratorium bagi pun kalau niat you tak nak bayar balik tu macam mana pun you tak bayar <laughs> Itu okay. perangai buruk lah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. So coming back to the to the to the topic back again. So this 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 wording is very important lah. Eh. Sediakan payung sebelum hujan. Okay, because many of them come to me. Okay, dia orang nak refinance sebab satu benda je. Sebab dia orang takut kehilangan pekerjaan ataupun gaji dia orang potong. Okay, the thing is whatever that we have speculated that people may have unemployment and people may have a pay cut. It is true. Okay, ini kisah benar. Okay, because I have somebody, okay, from uh, one of my existing client pun dah dah go through this already. Okay, so dah terkena. Dah terkena because their their salary approximately about 20 to 25k in a month, and they have a loan up to at least about 14 to 15k in a month. Okay, it is surviving. They are surviving for all these months. Tapi bila the gaji orang kena potong separuh, it's a 50% deduction. So when it's a 50% deduction from their salary they basically nak loan pun tak boleh nak bayar thank god dia orang accept moratorium so you see those people are the one that will be appreciating moratorium lah ah okay yang 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 tak ada loan yang tak ada apa-apa loan tu memang dia orang tak tahu pun benda moratorium tu right so yeah. i think don't take things for granted i rasa kalau boleh kita sediakan payung sebelum hujan maksudnya you make sure that you have that 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 particular cash to retain Ataupun you maybe cash tu you boleh guna untuk maybe buat investment. Who knows? Because at this point of time, what I believe is every 10 years you will have a recession. Okay, and every crisis there will be an opportunity. So, bila time-time ni mungkin ada opportunity yang hebat. Manalah tahu you ada duit cash tu RM50,000 dalam tangan and then bila you tengok ha, rumah lelong ataupun rumah ada con, you nak pump in RM50,000 tu untuk beli. Who knows? So, these are the things that maybe you can keep it. Okay, maybe the share price, you can even buy shares and all that. So, It, it's nothing wrong. Tapi the thing, most important thing is again lah, motif lah, motif refinance. Okay, the last part, objektif untuk refinance ni untuk kenapa? Okay, for what? You kena tahu. Okay, so mother... You have to have the knowledge in order yes. to do this. Yes. I mean, yes, I mean, yes. uh, Tuan, Tuan Amri boleh bantu the process. Yes. Okay, the process tu kita tak risau. Okay, you have people who can help you. Ada orang yang boleh bantu process tu. Tapi kalau you are not knowledgeable, kalau you sendiri tak ada ilmu, why you doing this, apa matlamat, You know, how to use the money, you know. Lepas tu, nak pilih yang jenis macam mana. What type of refinancing, blah, blah, blah. Semua tu, kalau tak tahu, aa, nanti jangan salahkan orang lain yang tolong you refinance. Betul. Okay, dia dah tolong refinance. Dia kata, okay, I'm done. Nah, duit you all. Nah, ada extra RM100,000. 
Ah lepas tu nanti besok bila duit tu tak tahu pergi mana, dia tak tahu nak urus, dia kata ah ni semua salah tuan Amris lah. Itu dia tolong saya refinance dapat 100,000, dia tak ada advice saya pun. Ah itu bukan kerja dia eh. Ah you need to understand. <laughs> itu bukan kerja dia pula nak tolong advice oh duit ni patut buat apa dan sebagainya. You know, ah, dia ada banyak klien nak kena urus. Okey, sebagai contohlah. Ah betul, so betul, kena hati-hati. Betul, betul, betul. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. That's, that's what you said lah. That's why selalunya bila orang nak refinance ni, dia you, you cannot just come out from the blue and then you rasa macam, eh, hey, I nak refinance lah. You need to have a motive lah. Kenapa and all that lah. Alright. So I feel Kena that you actional plan. Yes, correct. Because uh, like what you said, some of them because the interest rate sekarang ni rendah. Okay, later I'll touch about that. So bila sometimes bila orang nak refinance sekarang ni, maybe sebenarnya untuk pendekkan dia punya tahun. Okay, sebab bila dia pendekkan dia punya tahun, dia akan rasa macam, eh, hey, I sebenarnya bayar yang sama saja. Sebenarnya, and, and, and one more thing is because I'm paying it fast. So, I feel, you know, reason-reason macam ni, kalau you nak refinance, it's, it's quite logical lah. Okay, don't just refinance. Because some of them, bila dah ada duit lah, jadi, bila dia orang dah ada duit dalam tangan lah, the money tak ingat lah, tak ingat. Okay, dia, dia, dia orang punya spending tu macam tak ingat dunia tau. So, you know, <laughs> they, they will tend to buy a lot of things. So, I, I've had a lot of cases, sorry to share this, I, I just want to share this, but I have a lot of cases of refinance. Bila diorang dah dapat cash out portion ni, sebenarnya diorang punya family pun tak tahu yang diorang ada cash macam ni. Okay, so bila signing letter offers ataupun bila kita jumpa klien untuk refinance benda ni semua, uh, the husband will, will speak to me saying that, you know, eh, hey, so I cannot wife dia. Okay, so the husband will say me, you know, I'm rich, I better don't tell my wife that I'm having this bunch of money. Then I said, okay, why? They said, no, just just don't lah. Because if I'm going to tell her, then, uh, you know, we, we're going to have a lot of Shopee's, Lazada's coming into the house like nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a joke lah, okay? It's a joke, okay? I'm not saying that most women hey, are tapi, like that. Tapi there's, there's okay. also a lot of interests. Suddenly, it's not just Shopee and Lazada. A new car drive to the drive uh, driveway. <laughs> yes, yes, that, that's why, that's why I told him, I told him, I said, you don't be thinking that only your wife is going to make such decision, you may make that decision too. Mana lah tahu you nak tukar kereta ke kan? So then he said, uh, yelah, betul lah bro, dah dapat, dah dapat duit, dah macam ni lah kan, timbul lah kan, you have that, that tanduk on your head, you know? <laughs> okay, so I think I move on to the next slide. Okay, now, whatever I speak is all about semasa and now it's about selepas MCO, okay? It means that at this moment of time is considered selepas MCO. And how is it going to be like? First is mungkin peningkatan case and subsell ini, subsell and auction ni dia akan meningkat. Okay, but in a very slow pace because again, not all the buyers yakin. Some buyers mungkin dia akan dapat rasa okay, rumah yang I tunggu selama ni still tak ada orang beli. So, I nak beli sekarang ni. So, the the slow pace are there. And in fact, previously the lens office and also some developers office semua tutup. So, bila dia tutup, tak boleh nak dapat consent, tak boleh nak dapat developer confirmation, dan tak boleh nak berjalan. Tapi right now, I think since most industry have opened, and I think dia punya cases pun akan bergerak secara slow pace, tapi of course, it's not going to be so high as how last time is. Okay, in a very slow pace saja. Okay, so yeah, to be frank, after uh, MCO announcement uh, on the 4th May, people start working and all that, uh, basically we start getting cases of sub sales and also uh, auction cases I tak dapat lagi tapi sub sale cases I got it already. Okay, I, now I what? Option tak, tak buka lagi kan? Kalau tak yes, sub yes. saya. Yes, betul-betul. Auction tak buka lagi. I think what tak I get from my... You don't to do online auction if I'm not mistaken. Yes, exactly. That's I'm what I also... Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I'm so waiting for that actually. Tapi the thing is... um. They haven't come up with with a with a with a with a conclusion yet. Tapi I rasa auction on the on the public market that how they used to go for auction. I think most probably we still going to take about one to two months from now. Okay, because it, it is still risky for everybody to stay together, and I think it's better for them to delay a bit. Why I'm saying that peningkatan case auction ni tiba-tiba akan meningkat sebab before they announce lockdown. They have already a list, a whole bunch of list of auction in the particular bank. The bankers, the banks yeah, instead of auction. Backlog, uh, backlog. Yes, yes, the backlog. So those are the those are the listing that are being hold at the moment. So I think they are going to release it anytime soon. You have to understand, siapa yang accept moratorium ni is the one that who actually have a good payment behavior of 90 days before. So those so, people who have not been having those good payment behavior, most probably if they lose job or whatsoever, they actually, their houses may go into auction as well. So, auction cases, somehow rather, it will increase in the future. Tapi sekarang ni, kita tak nampak sebab we are looking at maybe two to three months from now lah. Okay? So, the next is transaction of pembiayaan rumah akan meningkat sebab rumah ni adalah keperluan. Okay, whatever said and done, we are Malaysian. We are Malaysian. We are typical Malaysian. 
bila kita dah ada du- kita dah ada kerja first thing what it comes our mind is buying apa kereta rumah. then rumah then after that credit card ah uh, we still have this thing then baru mungkin girlfriend okay so we have this three main uh, keperluan so yeah rumah is also the main tapi of course client-client yang pergi jumpa Zaidi you jangan pergi cakap yang you dah ada kereta BMW umur 24 tahun memang you kena lah memang you kena okay Okay. Eh, saya okey je. Saya sebenarnya okey je. 24 tahun pakai BMW, saya kata okey, no problem. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, you know, uh, some of them bila dia ada kereta, because when you see, like what Zahidi said uh, tadi, uh, when you look at uh, kereta, is actually you are buying, the, you you actually buying a wrong car. Buying a car is not a problem, tapi you buying a wrong car. Okay, not because, you know, you buying an, ex- you see, when you buy an expensive car, simple je. I think Zahidi punya term, when you buy an expensive car, you actually parking it actually at the parking lot. So sebenarnya you bayar installment di rumah, you are parking at the parking lot dah ni. Bukan je semua orang tengok pun. So so he actually you know, <laughs> encourage people to take grab and go to work. It's much more cheaper. Okay. So yeah, you know, bak kata orang, bak kata orang, empat tiang is always better than empat tayar. Okay. So, so better to buy house because the value appreciate and you buy car, the value depreciate. So keperluan is, uh, rumah is always keperluan. Siapa-siapa yang beli rumah, you see ah, jadi to be just for your record ah, 2014 when I start doing this line industry ah, I I I tend to understand at that year most of them siapa-siapa yang beli rumah tu selalunya 30 umur 30 tahun ke atas, okay? Well sooner or later it gets ah, maybe 2015 to 2016 like that ah, I I I I I've come to know that actually kebanyakan case itu datang daripada umur yang 24, 25, okay, some even have 23 as well as a joint applicant. So, so pendekatan ataupun uh, maybe the exposure about property ni is is getting uh, more positive among better. the market, uh, more better because people like you, Zaidi, to be really frank, people like you and people like a lot of other seafoods outside there, they are basically giving a lot of free knowledge actually, basically to make you understand uh, kepentingan uh, pembelian rumah. Hai. Okay, so yeah, as what I told you, pembelian rumah akan meningkat sebab rumah ni sentiasa akan menjadi keperluan. Alright, the next is uh, peningkatan case reject. Kenapa? Okay, now reject cases is going to be massive <laughs> this year, this time. Okay, so, now, ramai yang submit, ramai yang kena reject. Betul, kenapa? Okay, now because I, I just show you a simple graph first lah. Okay, uh, table. Okay, now when you look at this table, eh, I'm not going to show some 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 apa graph lah, up down punya graph lah, candlelight or whatever is it, all these things I don't going to show. It's a simple table when you look at this. 2019 to 20 I just compare these two years. This is my personal sales, okay? Nothing got to do with my company. It's my personal sales. When you look at January, okay? When you look at January, you have the submission cases. And then when you look at approval, you have the sum, uh, approval cases. Okay, bila you tengok dekat bawah sekali, you can see actually the approval rate that what I have is about 80% out of uh, the cases, okay? Which is approval. Bila kita tengok rejection is about 20 cases. It means the example today, kalau I dapat 10 case, maybe 8 cases approved, 2 cases, maybe it's rejected. That has been the record maybe the past 2 to 3 years along the road. Tapi when I look at 2020, okay, the cases tiba-tiba dia jatuh. Okay, when you look at March and April, dia jatuh. Okay, that is where the March part and all that, they have the speculation, you know, when the lockdown come into the picture, orang dah tak berani nak buat booking. And agent Hatana pun tak boleh nak bagi case. Tapi thank God, May onwards, I would say that my refinance cases is actually more than the subsidy cases indeed. Okay, so when I look at the approval, the approval tiba-tiba is only 60% and the rejection is 40% already. Okay, maybe the the, the the number shows that maybe the cases I dapat sikit lah. Okay, that's why maybe the, the rejection cases looks a lot. But I'm anticipating it's going to be still a lot more. Why? Because when you look at the last point, Beberapa sektor pekerjaan ini akan mengalami kesukaran pembiayaan. Okay, now uh, unfortunately during this point of time memang tak ada orang sangka benda ni boleh berlaku tapi ya, yeah, these sectors, first is tourism, ONG, airline, hotel, FMB and also mall, shopping malls. Okay, so these are the sectors that actually affecting the banks, okay. I'm not going to say which bank are the one who come out with the circulars ke apa. I tak boleh nak bagi tahu pun because I'm just basically giving you a general view saja. So, tapi most banks already come out with this. Okay, daripada dia punya tab yang dah buka sekarang ni dia orang tetap tengah tutup dia orang punya tab. Ketatkan dia punya tab. Okay, so yeah, to be said again, unfortunately kawan-kawan yang kerja ataupun klien-klien yang kerja in this particular industry most probably can be affected. Okay, sebab sometimes dia orang tahu kerja dia orang ni mungkin akan 
tak ada kerja mungkin when they go to office one day they see a letter and that could be the last day okay ataupun they go to office they see the letter dapat pay card okay so sakit sakit bagi dia orang and orang-orang macam ni lah nak nak refinance tu jadi susah okay because they have a lesser income orang-orang macam ni kena datang jumpa saya dulu but <laughs> Ya yeah, betul 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 okey I, I definitely will promote you boss okey so yeah memang uh, orang ini, ini ini golongan utama yang kena restructure dahulu uh, hmm. sebab siapa minat nak melabur ke nak beli tanah duduk rumah sendiri ke apa tu tak kisah tapi ini kena restructure uh, nak uh, apa nak bagi you punya kelulusan tu lebih mudah betul 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 uh, sebab kalau you just go in dengan satu pay slip Ya, yeah, patut you kata saya kerja well and yes, uh, masalah. Exactly, exactly. So so for me, I feel jangan, don't take things for granted lah. Don't think that you know everything lah. Kalau boleh, you need somebody, somebody to look at your profile. Okay, because when you decide everything yourself, you basically have that particular, apa yang panggil, conflict of interest. Okay, you, you you have that thing in you that you tend to choose what you want to do first. Tapi when you have a third person to look at it and without any interest, diorang lebih clear boleh nampak what you can do and what you cannot do. I think you you have clients semua kalau boleh please go ahead and find Tuan Zaidi ke apa lah. You tengok, I buat marketing kau-kau eh. Okay. <laughs> so please go and see him. Okay. To be really frank. Okay. This is this off the record lah. Okay. To be really frank. Most of them siapa-siapa yang datang daripada uh, from Zaidi's contact to me. I get all quality clients. No joke. I get all quality clients and normally it approves. Okay. The always question is what package that they want. Itu saja. Okay, DSR dia boleh lepas, scoring dia okay. So for me, I feel Tuan Zaidi, you're doing a pretty good job. Okay, of course I can't judge that lah. Okay? You're, you're one of my my sifu as well, you see. So yeah. So come back to the topic that yeah, this uh, particular pekerjaan ini akan ada kesukaran because they are already circulars coming up from the banks. Tapi don't worry. Okay, I'm just saying that don't worry sebab not It's not that you tiba-tiba ada payslip contoh AirAsia, I just use AirAsia lah eh, airline. Contoh you ada payslip AirAsia and then you nak beli rumah ataupun you nak refinance and then bila you, you know you pergi dekat bank-bank tertentu and then bank to reject. It, it doesn't work that way. Okay, it's all depending on case to case basis. Bukan semua reject. Okay, it depending on case to case basis. That's why don't take risk terus masuk bank. Okay, you can meet somebody first like Tuan Zaidi or what, get your advice done and then you come and meet me. Okay, because I'm going to submit to the banks that can approve your loan. Okay, this is very important. So, jangan, you know, jangan pandai-pandai pergi buat macam ni bila loan dah reject semua bank. You know, when the banks have all the records of rejections of loan, you want to get an approval from another bank pun. Tiga kali kena reject. Ah, susah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, we, we, we don't waste time lah. Okay, kalau boleh kita gunakan masa tu betul-betul. Okay, but but again, back to the topic. Again, I feel at this point of time, uh, it's just sekarang sahaja. Okay, buat masa ini saja yang akan uh, apa mengalami kesukaran pembiayaan all these sectors. Okay, it's not going to be for long or it's not going to be forever. Okay, we are looking at maybe the next few months. But if economically Malaysia picked up well, kalau kita boleh, you know, can keep our un- unemployment low, and I think that basically kita punya apa rating untuk approval for this particular industry can be higher. Okay, so don't give up. Okay, at this point of time saja. Okay, kawan kawan just relax dulu. Please go and see Zaidi. Just you know, get a get a breathing, uh, breathing apa, breathing uh, space first. Okay, jangan jangan uh, kelangkabut, alright? Now oh, the next thing is, uh, sambung a little bit. Uh, okay, some banks you're gonna have a guidelines yang ketat. Okay, yes, like what I just mentioned lah. Okay, dia dah ketatkan dia punya apa, uh, tap water tap. And when you look at dia punya uh, risiko, sebenarnya banks are actually making the particular guidelines more tighter it's because of risk itu saja okay because of risiko hari ni bila banks nak approve you punya loan is satu-satu reason dia orang adalah risiko kalau banks dapat rasa yang you ni tak ada risiko risiko level you rendah and you boleh bayar loan tu selama 35 tahun then your loan don't it's not a problem to get approved Okay, tapi bila dia rasa risiko you tinggi based on apa yang pekerjaan sebelum ni, you know, the, the thing that I've mentioned. So most probably dia orang akan rasa dia orang takut. Okay, kalau I bagi loan pada orang ni, takut kalau dia kehilangan pekerjaan ataupun dia kena potong gaji, macam mana dia, dia nak bayar balik loan kat saya? Okay, when you talk about banks, you talk about interest. Okay, you cannot separate them. Okay, dia orang punya keuntungan is from their interest. Okay, so they are willing to give out loan if you have a lower risk. Itu sangat penting tu. Okay, so people with high risk, that's why they are rejecting the loan. Okay, at this point of time, at this crisis, memang kebanyakan pekerjaan 
is actually having a high risk as well. Okay, next. When you look at kebanyakan bank ni, sebenarnya akan memberikan keutamaan kepada peminjam yang ada duit. Okay, it's a bit funny lah. Eh. Okay, a bit funny at this point of time uh, uh, that actually ramai yang tanya, ramai yang cakap that actually bank ni sebenarnya patut bagi loan pada orang yang tak ada duit. Dia kenapa nak bagi loan pada orang yang ada duit? Okay, I mean this is quite, yeah, logically yeah, but you know, banks at the end of the day, it's their business. Okay, I nak, so kalau I ni bank, I nak bagi duit kepada orang yang boleh bayar balik. Kalau I bagi, you know, loan kepada orang yang tak boleh bayar balik, then I'm consider some guru or some some, some Tuhan or whatsoever, you know, doing something which is good. So, I, I, have, I have a, I have a analogy on this lah, you know. Kalau bank tu, dia bagi pinjam kepada orang yang tak ada duit, dia punya first client ni lah, orang yang minta sedekah dekat depan pintu bank tu. <laughs> kan ha, yeah, yeah, tapi yeah, betul, betul. tapi it's not lah orang yang masuk dalam bank tu orang yang ada pekerjaan tetap orang yang ada <coughs> dia boleh tunjukkan dia ada kemampuan untuk bayar balik you know yeah. all those things yang walk into the bank yang dapatkan kemudahan yeah, betul. bank bukan buat kerja charity Yeah, so 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 like what I just said, sesiapa yang refinance duit, kalau you dapat simpan duit tu sebagai backup saving, please lah simpan. Sebab sekarang ni banks nak tengok you punya saving. Okay, sebelum so dia approve, dia nak tengok pastikan you ada duit backup. Sebab dia dapat jangka that maybe you might lose your income or you might even uh, get a lesser income from your current uh, salary. So they need to know whether you are sustainable or not. You have or not another part of income in you that basically you can pay the loan. So memang backup, duit backup tu sangat penting lah. So kalau boleh duit cash yang you ada tu, kalau boleh you simpan dalam bank account, jangan sentuh dia. Okay, you nak proses di finance ke apa ke, you proses dulu, settlekan dulu, jadikan dokumen itu sebagai dokumen sokongan. Okay, this is one of the tips that I can say. Okay, this is very important because when you have cash to show to the banks, banks will feel confident in giving you out loans. Okay, mana-mana yang patut reject pun kemungkinan boleh approve. So that is so much so important that to keep cash in your in your account. Okay, so yeah. The next is interest rate. Okay, now currently the the OPR rate baru-baru ni dah turun. Okay, I rasa this year dah turun maybe dah dua ataupun tiga kali if not mistaken. And um, right now the average rate, average interest rate for housing loan dalam banks banks is approximately can go as low as 3.2% sampai maybe 3.9 to at least maximum pun 4 lah. I think this is the 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 the, the, the range. Average lah below 4 lah sekarang. Yes, 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 average all below 4. Uh, so the lowest can go up to 3.2. Okay, some banks are giving some sort of packages that you can get such good rates. So of course, rates ini dia bergantung kepada client profile as well. Okay, kalau you punya profile good, then you get good rate. If you have a higher risk, you may not get a good rate as well. So it's a bit uh, tough to determine the rate. Tapi at the end of the day, the, the average is so much lower than what it was before. I think this is the lowest in history, am I right, Tuan Zaidi? Yeah, uh, probably. probably eh? <coughs> ada ada yeah. kemungkinan because this is speculation lah in other words kan. Oh. Oh. Uh, Malaysia I tak too sure, it depends on how Bank Negara Malaysia handle the situation. But worldwide, we will be seeing negative interest rate. So we yeah. we are heading towards that region, you know. So I, I tak boleh bayangkan kalau the rest of the country, negara lain di sekeliling kita going towards negative interest rate uh, macam Jepun dah berpuluh you know, dah bertahun-tahun-tahun eh negative interest rate so there, there will be a new dimension lah uh, on the on the entire situasi you know yes yes exactly kalau tu kan ah uh, orang tak pernah hadapi situasi macam tu <coughs> kalau benda tu macam tu berlaku kebarang kalian kita letak duit dekat bank kita kena bayar bank so okay. instead of the bank is paying us for interest whatever not probably we have to pay the bank because we putting our money there. Exactly. So, exactly. <coughs> tapi kita kena tengok lah keadaan macam right now we are not in that region yet. Dekat Malaysia belum lagi sampai. But, but uh, kalau penurunan ni berlaku lagi by by uh, end of this year <coughs> dan kalau dekat lagi by mix next year kalau Malaysia punya ekonomi tak you know slow pace dengan kata lain. So we will probably seeing below 3%. So by mid next year. Exactly, exactly. You are right. You are right, Zadi. Why? Because I, I estimate that uh, another penurunan mungkin akan berlaku uh, most probably in the near future, which is uh, maybe uh, on the third quarter ataupun the last quarter of the year. 
Okay, when the last quarter, I think most probably they akan turun lagi. So this is the estimation lah. Mungkin dia turun sebanyak 0.75. Because I think the circulars, I got it from CIMB. So basically, they have mentioned this is one of their their their, their website. So this is what I, I've got it lah. Okay, tapi anyway, uh, I don't know how how true it's going to be. But yeah, as what you have said, uh, speculation dah ada. And mostly, when you look at this point of time, bila speculation tu dah ada, it's almost, 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 uh, it's going to happen lah. Okay, but with, with what you said lah. So, most probably we'll be bagi looking bagi, at... Bagi yang memang dah ada loan, bagi mereka yang dah ada loan, tak payah risau sangat pasal benda ni, uh, dia akan auto-adjust. So, Betul. you just need to keep up dengan you punya bank, uh, pastikan you follow up dengan diorang. Kalau diorang tak adjust lagi the latest uh, rate, so you kena bagi tahu your banker, say, eh, hey, rate sekarang dah turun, kenapa I punya pembiayaan masih lagi sama, it should, you know, it should yeah. go down lah, in other words. Yeah. True, because uh, most of them actually, uh, most of the banks actually send out letters uh, ataupun dia akan bagi uh, information on when the rates uh, have reduced and what's your latest installment going to be. So, selalunya diorang akan bagi, tapi that's what you say lah, kalau, kalau memang tak ada orang, you tak dapat apa-apa ke surat ke apa, it's better that you go refer back to your particular bank lah. Sebab you need to revise, the, the rate will be revised as what well. interest rate is fluctuating. Okay, it's not fixed rate. Okay, it's fluctuating. So, when it's fluctuate, when it gets lower, your installment gets lower too. So anyway, Kecuali kalau start. you ambil dulu, kalau you ambil fixed loan rate, uh, then you sakit lah. Uh. Yes, betul. Uh, kalau yang ambil fixed loan rate tu, please refinance sekarang. Okay, jumpa saya. <laughs> Ataupun you jumpa saya dulu sebelum jumpa saya. <laughs> okay, so the next is, uh, when you look at peningkatan ketara untuk case refinance dan juga auction, okay, like what I've mentioned, case refinance akan sentiasa increase and also auction cases tiba-tiba akan banyak tapi it's not now, it's going to be quite some time from now lah okay so then I think that's all I can share for today about what is sebelum and selepas and, and uh, I think there's nothing much for me to share I believe that uh, maybe uh, ramai dapat uh, tahu okay ataupun dapat have a, a, a little bit of apa hint ataupun apa yang akan berlaku selepas uh, MCO ni uh, selepas uh, this COVID or whatsoever lah. Okay, so I hope that uh, people will take advantage and jangan buat keputusan betul-betul just don't, just don't make uh, uh, decisions too soon, too fast. Kalau boleh jumpa somebody, get a little bit of advice and you know, write down your commitment, look after your income or whatsoever and then baru you planning seterusnya. Jangan terus, you know, because of market pressure, because of all the seafoods are asking you to refinance and then you pun just go ahead with all the refinance. Don't do that. Okay, this is the best time for those siapa yang ada uh, time, okay, when you have time at home, please look out your financial portfolio. Okay, you try to make sure that your documentations are all okay. Try to cantikkan your payment behavior because all these are basically a preparation when the time that you are going into apa, a loan. Okay, so persediaan tu penting. Persediaan tu penting. Okay, jangan jangan pergi tanpa bersedia. Okay, so make sure you 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 make sure you have all the tools right sebelum kita apply loan. Sebab kalau tak kita apply loan ni kita susah. Sebab bila kita dapat client ni, kalau scoring tu tak cantik, okay, bila dia punya dokumen semua tak lengkap. And then bila kita nak masuk loan tu, you know, it's a it's a rejection, you see. So bila rejection, is going to waste your time, it's going to waste my time, everybody's time. So kalau boleh, you try to filter first yourself. Okay, sebelum masuk loan. Minta pendapat daripada saya, boleh minta pendapat daripada Tuan Zaidi. Or whoever that you know, your personal bankers ke siapa-siapa, boleh minta dulu pendapat sebelum getting into the the picture. Okay, hmm. so I think that's all. Apa, I, okay, apa, de, apa de, um, dengan kata lain, nak pergi berperang ni, kena ada senjata dululah. Betul. You know, jangan pergi berperang dengan, you know, buka dada macam tu, no shield, no nothing, no weapon, <laughs> you're going to get killed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, so kita akan um, buka ruangan untuk um, bertanyakan soalan, okay, so bertanyakan soalan. Uh, jadi, sebelum tu saya nak shout out sikit kepada mereka yang nak dapatkan buku forensik kewangan saya secara percuma. Boleh tengok yang dekat, uh, you know, dekat skrin anda yang tengah keluar tu. So, uh, siapa dah dapatkan buku forensik kewangan secara percuma, tolong uh, uh, share video ni, okay, share, tag kawan-kawan, kemudian screenshot. Okay, tag, share, screenshot dan letakkan di ruangan uh, komen. Okay, letakkan di ruangan komen supaya nanti admin saya boleh pilih pemenang yang boleh memenangi uh, buku forensik kewangan ni secara percuma. So, admin saya akan hubungi anda untuk tahu lebih uh, detail bagaimana nak hantar buku ni kepada anda. Okay. Apa yang anda perlukan senang aja, 
anda tag kawan-kawan seramai yang boleh ok um, share video ni screenshot dia kemudian letak di ruangan komen nanti admin saya akan akan uh, hubungi anda ok bagi mereka yang ada soalan uh, tentang uh, pembiayaan uh, hartanah so kita buka soalan kita ada a uh, few minutes dengan uh, Tuan uh, Amrish, ok, uh, kita mungkin boleh jawab soalan uh, yang dikemukakan, ok. So, uh, macam saya sebutkan tadi, bagi mereka yang nak dapatkan buku forensik kewangan yang macam keluar dekat skrin tu, uh, tolong share video ni, tolong uh, tag kawan anda, kemudian screenshot dia dan letak di orang komen, admin saya akan akan uh, semak dan uh, pilih kemenang eh. So, kita ada satu soalan daripada Tuan Faizah Jamal Okey, dia tanya bagaimana cara terbaik untuk orang yang dah ada dua rumah untuk dapatkan biaya 90% instead of 70%. Ni soalan favorite lah. Uh, di mana-mana pun dia akan tanya kat soalan ni. Okey, <laughs> I think I think I think the question is a good question lah. Memang famous lah macam mana pun memang orang akan tanya, okey. I think Faizal Jamal is a person that who actually texted me I think uh, WhatsApp me yesterday I think regarding uh, refinance or something. So thank you again for your question. Tapi saya rasa untuk cara terbaik untuk yang dah ada dua rumah tu maybe there are few few things that I can mention lah okay. Uh, first thing first is maybe you know maybe katakan rumah tu atas nama you seorang saja. Okay and then maybe uh, you having a two loans under 90% 90% and then the third housing loan is going to be 70% already. So to avoid getting 70% ni mungkin the first housing loan ni you boleh jual rumah tu ataupun rumah tu boleh jual kepada your wife. Okay, biar your wife dapat pembiayaan daripada you. So it means that you take off your 90% loan from your first property and then your third property jadi balik as 90% loan. You, you can do that. So that's why, that's why so siapa yang nak beli rumah, kalau boleh kita elakkan untuk join loan because you 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 have the chance to do such things. That's one. Uh, number two, number two I think most probably you boleh dapat uh, 70% is um, I mean to avoid 70% is your third property tak perlulah pergi beli residential okay where you can you know try to get a commercial property sebab commercial maybe your loan approximately about 80% loan okay sometimes you can get up to 85 so actually daripada you keluarkan 30% down payment you are actually reducing your costing you see Uh, so maybe you kena tukar hala sikit tengok investment mana yang lebih baik uh, tapi obviously lah eh, kita tengok commercial industry at this moment is definitely not going to do well lah eh, for some time tapi you never know if you have a good offer why not and number tiga most probably the people that uh, you need to open up a, a, a investment holding company okay so this particular thing skills ni uh, is quite detailed I think maybe you can you can whatsapp me or whatsoever maybe i can talk to you detail because this is depending on the on a person situation actually so i can't generalize tapi these are the ways lah i think that i you can find and uh, besides that ada juga cara-cara yang lain i i, I cannot share it through here because uh, there's a lot of bankers there's a lot of bank officials mungkin tengok dekat sini kalau kang ai bagi tahu benda ni habis saya kena kan blacklist terus nak daripada daripada ai nak terus submit pun tak boleh terus blacklist kan so yeah hmm. i have to be careful with what i'm, I'm sharing here Okay, macam yang Tuan Amrish mention tadi, okay, so ada banyak cara lain yang kita boleh buat untuk dapatkan uh, 90% loan, okay. Bagi bagi kita 90% ke, 70% ke, 50% ke, it's just a number. So, number ni kita boleh, saya tak guna perkataan menu pelik lah, tapi lain numbers ni bergantung pada cara macam mana kita buat, kita buat dia, okay. Orang lain mungkin nampak 70%, tapi 70% kita tu sebenarnya 100% loan pun boleh juga buat macam tu. Okay, so it depends. Dia tengok keadaan dan situasi. Uh, you know, uh, dan you know, lagi satu, uh, you ada dua hatanah, tiga hatanah, empat hatanah, lima hatanah, siapa kata kena ada empat, lima loan? So you boleh ada empat, lima hatanah dengan satu loan. Uh, <laughs> okay, so then the rest of the loan you boleh dapat loan baru untuk hatanah baru. Okay, so. Uh, nak tahu nak tahu macam mana jumpa Zaidi, you see? <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, ada banyak cara lah dengan kata lain. Yep. Okay, alright. So ini pun soalan favourite juga. Uh, Cik Muhammad Najib tanya, kalau government loan nak tukar kepada bank loan, umur 47 tahun saya pergi duit. So dia kata basically boleh tak tukar daripada government loan LPPSA to uh, bank loan. Okay, okay. I rasa uh, good question lah. Again, a, a very good question Mr. Muhammad Najib. Okay, so I rasa uh, nak tukar loan government kepada loan bank, okay, mungkin reason nak tukar ni sebab you dapat tahu yang rate 
uh, rate in uh, government FPPSA tu adalah is actually at 4% and right now when we look at the banking rate is actually way lower way lower than the government loan rate so maybe you nak refinance uh, basically tujuan eh tujuan untuk saving duit i think it's a good thing lah i rasa tapi sebelum you refinance tu encik i rasa better you jumpa tuan zaidi ke sesiapa make sure that you tahu motif you nak saving duit tu macam mana okay it can be like taking out your cash and just keeping aside or you can be like macam keluarkan untuk settlekan hutang-hutang ataupun it can be like keluarkan duit tu maybe nak beli rumah ke apa ke whatsoever you can also do it because your age is 40 years old I think kalau kita ikutkan kalau kita nak apply loan uh, your loan can go up to 30 years okay sebab dia maksimum umur 70 tahun so you can get a 30 years of tenures uh, daripada mana-mana bank because from government when you look at refinance from government to a bank loan sebenarnya uh, last year, eh, last year, eighty percent of my refinance cases are actually from government loan to the bank loan. So it's doable as long kalau you punya DSR semua cantik. Then I think shouldn't be a problem lah, Muhammad Najib, Encik Muhammad Najib. Thank you. Okay. So another soalan daripada Encik Mak Hussein dia tanya apa yang terbaik kalau kita dah ada dua rumah yang dah habis bayar atas satu nama mortgage. So uh, dia tanya mungkin remortgage. Yeah okay. Alright so uh, another good question Mr Mat Hussein Saleh. Okay so yeah. Apa yang terbaik kalau kita dah ada dua dua buah rumah yang dah habis bayar atau dan atas satu nama. Okay it means that katakan sekarang ni you dah ada dua rumah and all that is under your name sajalah kan. Okay if this the case that's right the reason untuk remortgage tu kena ada lah. So if you rasa you nak remortgage satu unit dulu and then maybe daripada duit tu you nak buat something then it's up to you. Okay, it's back to actually the question of objective refinance. Sebenarnya kenapa you nak remortgage? Okay, kalau you tak ada reason nak remortgage, then better not because you already have a property in 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 hand. And mungkin bila you dapat rental income tu, it's actually a clear a clear net profit you having it monthly. So why refinance? So yeah, you kena tahu apa uh, reason untuk refinance. In your case, most probably maybe what I feel that you can remortgage is to maybe get another unit, you can buy another unit actually sebab kalau rumah dah settle, tak ada loan apa-apa nak refinance, nak remortgage, boleh saja, tak ada masalah you can get as much as a 90% loan, boleh, tak ada masalah okay, despite, make sure, make sure that your your income is okay, you punya documents semua cantik okay, then I think shouldn't be a problem lah so again, it's up to up to your decision kenapa you nak remortgage so yeah, it's not a problem kalau nak remortgage hmm. Okay, so um, macam macam Tuan Amri kata tadi ada kaedah tu ada banyak lah you know sebab kita tak bukan kat sini nak bincang pasal kaedah dia uh, yang penting lah matlamat tu okay kalau dah sedikit berumur mungkin kita boleh gunakan cara ini untuk retirement uh, pun boleh juga okay so uh, dia, dia bergantung you kena tengok matlamat matlamat tu kena jelas lah lepas tu baru kita pilih apa kaedah yang paling sesuai di mungkin pun ada banyak cara dan ada banyak uh, pilihan remortgaging okay so takut nanti kalau tersa tersalah remortgage takut jadi komitmen yang besar pula pada diri sendiri okay so kena kena tengok kita kena kira dulu okay so ini rasanya soalan yang sama saya government service telah ambil loan rumah dengan bank oh, okay okay so basically dia kerja government tapi ambil loan dengan bank bagaimana tu pendekkan tempoh bayaran daripada masa yang sama ada backup sharing boleh refinance ke? Okay. So ini kalau kalau saya tolong jawab untuk Amris lah. So secara ringkas je boleh refinance. Part refinance tu tak ada masalah. Apa-apa loan rumah you ada semua boleh refinance. Tapi kat sini saya rasa yang paling utama adalah jenis refinancing tu. Okay sebab kalau you kata nak pendekkan loan rumah waktu yang sama nak ada backup cash <coughs> dia, dia kena ada specific uh, type of refinancing ok, you tak boleh, contoh lah eh, you tak boleh, kalau nak buat benda macam ni, you tak boleh ambil term loan sebagai contoh, you tak boleh refinance ambil term loan nanti you ada komitmen yang tinggi ok, you memang ada extra cash tapi waktu yang sama ada komitmen tinggi tapi tak boleh nak pendekkan uh, baki hutang ok, jadi kalau uh, kena buat refinancing dengan kaedah lain ok, so kalau saya boleh nyatakan sini, mungkin you boleh buat term plus overdraft sebagai contoh Okay, term plus OD. So, term, you boleh kecilkan you punya existing baki hutang supaya asuran bulanan jadi kecil. Overdraft, you ada you punya backup uh, cash. Waktu yang sama, you punya term since dia dah kecil, you boleh pendekkan tempoh 
uh, loan tersebut okay? uh, tapi macam mana nak buat uh, itu nanti kena berurusan dengan uh, Tuan Amrish lah for example okay? uh, dia akan bagi <coughs> banyak uh, pilihan Betul. Uh, cara Betul. macam mana nak, nak uh, refinance dalam bentuknya tu So, Betul, because because when you touch about OD, sebenarnya ada je banks yang boleh refinance and then the cash out portion tu you boleh guna OD you tak perlu nak guna term loan pun or whatsoever sebab OD tu you, if you know how to use the OD in a proper manner I rasa lebih, benda tu lebih membantu Okay, uh, there's two there's two ways of 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 some people dia nak refinance like macam you see you nak katakan nak kurangkan uh, Puan K. Azura, okay, katakan nak kurangkan your tempoh pembayaran tu memang boleh sebenarnya because at the end of the day for you to choose your payment Uh, years, 10 years is depends on you kalau you nak 15 tahun, nak 25 tahun, 20 tahun pun boleh tapi you need to know your actual years lah berapa your tahun you, you nak and kenapa okay so that is the most important thing so again government loan to a bank loan is not a problem at all as long you rasa benda tu dapat membantu then please go ahead right? okay so we have another question daripada Cik Mael Yahya dia tanya adakah rental agreement valid for next submission loan as income? Okay, good question, Mr. Mai Yahya. Okay, rental agreement is still valid. Okay, why? Because you, it, it is a property that you have, you are giving out rental, is a rental income. It is only valid kalau you ada tenancy agreement stamping and making sure that agreement uh, rental tu masuk you punya bank statement at least 3 bulan. Okay, to prove that's incoming. Okay, so some banks bila kita submit dekat banks tu, banks dia akan minta SMP. Okay, dia nak tengok sama ada rumah tu you punya ataupun tidak. Okay, because some of them have been doing sublet. So, you may not have an SMP. So, see, that's come back to square one lah. Bila kita nak submit bank, kita kena tengok banks punya guidelines yang mana yang minta ni, yang mana yang minta tu. Okay, tapi bila banks minta SMP, most probably they want to see how many names in your SMP. So, if your SMP, you have two names and your rental agreement is only have one name. If the house is two person, then most probably your rental agreement tu will be divided to two. Okay. So daripada you know uh, an agreement katakan maybe your rental is 1000 ringgit sebulan okay so banks normally dia orang akan ambil 70% to 80% of your rental income so maybe dalam 700 hingga 800 untuk derive income tapi buat masa ni and also a news regarding rental income dia certain banks sekarang ni tak bagi sampai 70% sampai 80% dia orang ni sekarang bagi sampai 50% saja so if your loan is going to be 1000 ringgit i mean your rental income is going to be 1000 ringgit banks akan ambil sebagai 500 ringgit saja so still tetap ambil okey tapi mungkin pengambilan uh, di, the deriving income tu tak ada setinggi dulu okey mungkin rendah so you want to know how to make sure that they take it higher then uh, you contact me personally ah again uh, benda tu aku tak boleh nak sharing ah kat sini so, sensitif betul lah soalan <laughs> okey so kita ada soalan daripada tuan uh, Bija Okay, Bija is my long term uh, ahli urusan. Okay, uh, uh, dia jatuh bawah group uh, one million eh, uh, apa group satu juta saya. So, <coughs> so the property dia dah banyak lah. So uh, ini mungkin soalan umum dia tanya untuk orang lain. So saya rasa dia sendiri boleh jawab soalan ni. <laughs> so dia tanya dah begini so dia inform bahawa kopi ni akan berpanjang sehingga lima tahun. Apa pandangan tuan Ambridge? <laughs> I think this one lah. Uh... Uh, since you said that dia boleh jawab sendiri, I pun segan lah nak jawab kan Macam testing test power je kan Okay, so Encik Bija, thank you for your question anyway Okay, who are the informed okay, uh, bahawa COVID uh, akan berpecangan sehingga lima tahun, apa pandangan Okay, yeah, it, it, because COVID is something that what I've, what I've read is is something that uh, is not going to be over for the time being lah eh. It's going to take some time So yeah, as long economically, is it, if it's being affected by COVID And because of that, kita punya apa industri hartanah pun affected. Then too bad kita have to go through like this for the next five years lah. Tapi what I heard from 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 uh, the the apa the circulars saying that mungkin dapat apa dia punya vaccine within uh, as as fast as 18 months. That's what I heard lah. So tak tahulah boleh dapat ke tahu, maybe one to two years kalau vaccination tu dapat jumpa and then kita dapat uh, you know there's a cure for this COVID-19 then I believe that the next four ataupun five years is going to be a property bull run. Okay, it's going to be crazy for property market. Okay, tapi as long there's no vaccination being found or there's no effort being done, then I don't see how great this industry can shine. Okay, tapi based on mortgage, macam apa Tuan Zaidi bagi tahu, yes, 
we are going into a negative market and uh, most probably we are looking it coming anytime soon so if you don't know sebab benda ni kita kita sebenarnya explanation in malaysia is is facing first time this kind of pandemic and this kind of situation so it's a little bit hard for us to anticipate ataupun a little bit hard untuk kita speculate benda yang akan berlaku sebab mungkin benda ni mungkin benda yang akan berlaku adalah benda yang tak pernah berlaku Okay, so I think that's that's maybe my pandangan on Mila. Thank you, Mr. Bija. <laughs> okay, so we have a couple more questions. Ada banyak soalan yeah. ni kalau jawab semua mungkin tak habis. Tapi kita okay. pilih, okay. kita pun dah, dah overrun sikit tadi. Tapi kita bagi lagi maybe dalam 10 more minutes or so before kita yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I actually have a few more slides for me to share. So maybe if you can just set this last questions or something uh, okay. Okay. so 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 uh, this is will be the second last so i, I choose mm. another one will be the last one okay so mm. uh this second last question they tanya okay mana satu yeah. lebih baik untuk refinance refinance biasa uh, biasa i think terbelum lah yeah. ataupun refinance oh. dengan overdraft yeah i think uh tuan zadi knows this answer better so so <laughs> Dia depends lah. Sebenarnya yeah. benda ni nak term loan ke, nak overdraft ke, dia 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 alat. Okay, so, so jangan jangan tanya. Dia cerita dia macam ni lah lebih kurang. So jangan tanya seorang juru bina, okay, nak pakai tukur besi bagus ke, nak pakai pahat? Sebab dia akan pakai dua-dua pun. Ha, okay, sebab apa? Dia bergantung pada you nak buat apa. Kalau you buat rumah rebat ayam, different lah tool dia. Tapi kalau you nak buat rumah banglo, tool dia is different. Okay. Tapi mungkin juga dia pakai tukul dengan pahat. Maybe at different time. Okay, for example. For us, orang macam kita, ini hanya satu alat. This is just a tool that we use. Okay, so ini bukan dia punya end end result. Uh, ini bukan dia punya destination. So this is just the vehicle. Kenderaan nak pergi ke destinasi terang tersebut. Okay, so for us, vehicle ni kita boleh tukar-tukar. So kita tengok keadaan dan situasi. Betul. Okay, so hari ni mungkin pakai kereta, besok mungkin pakai motor. Okay, Betul. so janganlah tanya pakai kereta bagus ke pakai motor bagus. Tengok lah. <laughs> tapi, <laughs> tapi, tapi, ya yeah, betul. <laughs> tapi, tapi, I appreciate, I appreciate Encik Afizi punya question, okay, because he asking dalam situasi sekarang, okay. So, I again, okay. back to square one, I still feel that kalau you refinance biasa pun boleh, nak refinance dengan OD pun boleh juga. Tapi, you need to know what's your future plan, okay. Uh, bukan sebab just nak refinance saja, okay. The future plan, you nak maybe, nak maybe to invest a property, ataupun maybe to what, then you think that OD is going to be better, then go ahead. So, at the end of the day, it's your motif kenapa nak refinance. So sebenarnya dalam situasi sekarang ni you nak refinance macam mana pun is okay. Okay, and janji you refinance tu you ada motif shouldn't be a problem. But of course, situasi sekarang the best time to refinance because the rate the rate is superb at this moment. So it, it, it you should take opportunity kalau you rasa ada benefit lah nak refinance. Thank you Mr. Fizi. Alright. Ni soalan terakhir uh, daripada Puan Intan dia tanya bagaimana hmm. kes bar hmm. beri rumah dah sign agreement tapi belum start bayar Bolehkah kita ingin kurangkan rate atau ambil uh, faedah yang low rate? I mean, soalan dia boleh renegotiate balik dengan bank ke bila dah sign? Uh, you see, now ah, uh, wait lah, let me read back again Puan Intan. Uh, macam mana baru beli rumah, uh, dah sign agreement tapi belum start bayar bulan. Bolehkah kita, no, 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 you see the thing here is actually uh, when you sign your letter offers, probably maybe your rate katakan pada masa itu adalah 4.5% tapi you tak serve apa-apa lagi installment sampai you dapat kunci rumah, something like that, right? So, bila you nak serve installment masa tu, if the rate already reduced to 4% ataupun to lesser than 4%, you're actually currently going to pay the lesser rate. So, actually, sebenarnya rate tu is fluctuating. So, if today you haven't start paying the higher rate, which is good lah, sebenarnya you don't come out with a lot of money yet. Tapi kalau bila nak start bayar installment tu, bila rate tu dah jatuh, maybe bank pun dah revise dia punya rate, So automatically you actually paying lesser already. You tak perlu nak pergi minta untuk kurangkan rate. So it, it, that that that's the case actually. Tapi kecuali kalau dia punya rate ah dia punya loan is fixed rate lah. Correct, exactly. Then it's a fixed rate. Betul, betul. When it's a fixed rate then yes. That's why uh, fixed rate is not a good time lah at the moment eh. Uh, kepada sesiapa yang rasa fixed rate, fixed rate is the best time, I think it's not really a good time. So siapa yang ada fixed rate tu I think it's better to refinance to get a little bit low rate and have a breathing space maybe to settle off your your other loans or whatsoever lah. Sebab anytime you nak apply balik fixed rate pun boleh je. Nak refinance balik kepada fixed rate pun boleh je. So hmm. you need to know what you need at this moment lah untuk 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 apa kan. Okay, so thank you okay. Puan Intan. Alright, so terima kasih right. pada soalan. I think uh, Tuan Amrish yeah. nak kongsikan sesuatu dengan kita. Yeah. Uh, let let uh, 
Can yeah, you share I share back your. Can can can. I I share back my screen. Okay, I hope that ramai kalau boleh jangan leave the group. Uh, jangan leave the session dulu. Okay, because I'm going to give a little bit of good offers kat sini. Okay. Okay. Can see my slide, right? Okay. So now. Kebanyakan orang uh, actually sebenarnya dia orang maybe have a lot of questions. I actually pre I actually appreciate your questions sebenarnya sebab ramai yang nak tahu lebih lanjut. So I think it, I'm going to share my contact number later and you can basically uh, ask me all the question. Tapi the first and foremost siapa yang segan nak tanya ke apa, you can uh, always apa uh, look for Tuan Zaidi first and then you can refer back to me pun boleh je. Tapi I'm here actually to offer you something as well. Okay, the first thing first kalau kita nak apply loan rumah ataupun kita nak refinance, yang sangat penting adalah kita check profile kita dulu. Okay, which is the first thing is to check your secrets. Okay, so make sure your secrets is cantik and make sure your payment all cantik. So, sesiapa yang ada masalah untuk check secrets, basically you can get me to check your secrets. Okay, if you can send me the details that I need for you to, for me to check the secrets, then it's only 15 ringgit only. Okay, you can get it on the spot, you can get a secrets report together. Tapi this value untuk dapat secrets ni sebenarnya dalam RM25 if not mistaken dalam market. But to me it's only RM15 saja. you tak perlu buang, buang masa nak pergi bank negara Malaysia whatsoever to print the secrets report. Okay, I can get it within hours. Okay, that's one thing. Tapi when I look at MySitos, if not mistaken, MySitos punya website, uh, they have a free uh, uh, secrets checking up to 30th May. Uh, so if you don't want to pay me, please don't pay, no need to pay. You can go and get it free at the MySitos there and, and you can send me the the, the secrets report from there and basically I boleh tolong check you punya kelayakan loan. Okay, my checking on your kelayakan loan is free. Kalau you nak apply loan rumah, macam mana you nak tahu harga rumah berapa yang you boleh beli and mungkin sekarang ni gaji you RM5,000 and then you dapat tahu gaji you dah potong 70%, eh sorry 30% and you know after this on how are you going to buy a house ataupun refinance loan boleh lepas ke tak, you can basically come back to me. I only check it for free. Okay, it takes me about 15 minutes to 20 minutes sahaja untuk bagi tahu sama ada loan you lepas tak lepas and mostly calculation I is approximately 90% accuracy. Okay, uh, 10% tu I leave it to approver. Uh, sebab I'm not the approver. Yang yang sign ke atas tu orang lain, bukan saya. Okay, sebab every client have a different risk. Okay, different scoring system. So, scoring system tu I tak boleh nak detect. Alright. Now, the next thing is, syaratnya untuk buat ni adalah you kena join telegram group and channel saya. Ha, okay, uh, so you just join my my telegram channel ataupun my telegram group. Okay, so that I know where the source are coming from. I dah bagi the link, dah dah bagi the link dekat description of the video. Yes, Jadi yes, selepas yes. ni siapa nak tak, tak nak salin ke apa ke boleh pergi ke description video ni. Tengok dekat description you just click and then boleh masuk to the group ataupun to the channel lah. Betul. So in my channel basically what I'm going to do is every week I may be sharing a lot of videos about uh, loans, mortgage ke apa ke ataupun update-update terkini daripada banks ke whatsoever, uh, DSR changes ke apa ke whatsoever I can sharing dalam channel. So, you know, get yourself updated dekat situ, it's a free knowledge, it's a free thing, you don't need to pay anything. But if you want my service, it's also free, you can contact me, okay? My number is below and my email address pun dekat bawah. Okay, I hope everybody's happy with my first offer and my second offer. Okay, now, I'm sorry, Atul Zaidi, I'm taking your time, eh? is it okay? No, no problem, no problem, go ahead. All right, all right. I'm sorry to take everybody's time as well, eh? Okay, so anyway, my second offer is those sesiapa yang rasa time-time uh, ni memang Uh, susah, okay, maybe ada yang kehilangan pekerjaan, okay, ada juga yang maybe, you know, getting a very less salary, tak boleh nak cope or whatsoever. Of course, I'm here to at least, to at least the best that I can do is to provide you a peluang pekerjaan. Okay, I'm looking at to increase or to expand the business up to at least 50 of them in this year. So, it's terhad, okay, it's not going to be more than that. Uh, Uh, it's going to be just 50, so I hope that sesiapa yang berminat, nak join, nak tahu apa benda ni semua, you can contact me, okay, maybe manalah tahu rezeki you, okay, kita boleh bekerjasama, kan, manalah tahu, right? And also, we are looking at only full-time sahaja, and part-time is case-to-case -case basis lah, okay, because we only, uh, we encourage full-time lah, eh, but this job is never a part-time job, it's a full-time job, alright? So, and also we need to make sure sesiapa yang join ni, you have a little bit of creativity and innovative, okay, make sure that 
So siapa yang nak join ni boleh boleh menjana idea-idea baru ataupun boleh boleh try a uh, lot of things untuk dapatkan case baru ke whatsoever lah okay. So and of course yang sangat penting yang rajin okay. Of course semua employment siapa-siapa yang employ orang masuk mestilah nak yang rajin kan. Mana yang nak yang malas kan. Tapi of course I stress, stress kat sini yang rajin is because our job is not to say a 9 to 5 job. Our job is actually almost a 24 hours job. We can control our time. Tapi yang penting, we need to be committed. Alright? So, and then, ke siapa yang ada keinginan untuk meningkat pendapatan berbanding sekarang. Okay, if you think that you're going to, to, to earn more than what you earn right now, you can try looking at this place. Manalah tahu dekat tempat ni, manalah tahu you can, you know, from a motorbike, you can change to a car, manalah tahu kan. So, it depends on your, on your, on your, on your, on your commitment. Okay? And we will do an interview through Webex and Zoom at this moment, one-to-one, criteria sangat simple. Just got to be a Malaysian and uh, umur 21 sehingga 35. Okay, kalau umur 36 tu tak apa, jangan risau. Okay, you can just try to WhatsApp me. Mana dah tahu muka you nampak macam 35, I still accept juga. Okay, so <laughs> and then you need to have your own transport. Okay, preferably you need to have a car lah. Okay, uh, but if you don't have a car, it's fine. Motorbike pun tak apa sebab I dalam industri ni, I start ambil motorbike. Okay, Moderna Chris was my first motorbike that I travel. Okay, I have been traveling everywhere around the KL with uh, with the Chris. Okay, so until I can change my car as well. So, siapa-siapa yang ada motor tu, jangan rasa macam, oh, I ada motor saja, tak boleh nak kerja. Jangan. Okay, the most important, you ada commitment, you ada willpower, you betul-betul nak succeed. Tak kisahlah, basikal pun, you can still succeed. Okay, to be really frank. Alright? So, and then make sure that you have a diploma and a birth lah, eh, at least. And then kalau tak ada, it's okay. And as long you have SPM 5 passes, and make sure you have two years of experience, okay? Uh, because we are meeting with a lot of people and we need to have a little bit of experience in working. Kalau tak ada, then you have a diploma we do. Alright, and make sure that you are positive. Okay, don't be very, very negative. And sebab kerja kita orang ni akan face banyak rejection. Okay, loan reject lah apalah. Sampai bangun pagi tidur, uh, bangun pagi, uh, bangun pagi tengok tengok phone, tiba-tiba rejection. And then bila you rejection, the whole day you down. You datang office pun tak nak, you nak message leader pun tak nak. So don't be like that. Okay, the whole industry, you need to accept rejection. Rejection is something that you can learn. Okay, dalam hidup I, kalau tak ada rejection, tak ada lah approval. So, mesti kena ada uh, rejection. So, so, be positive for it. Okay, and last but not least, you have the perfect leader to guide you. Cik, poyo je kan? <laughs> okay. hey, sorry, Amrish. Tadi, tadi internet ah. disconnect lah. The, the, when you say about the... SPM yeah. and so on, suddenly uh-huh. the, the internet di- disconnected. So, uh, okay. you saying something just now? Okay, now okay kah? Uh, sekarang okay, sekarang okay. Okay, yeah, coming back to the being positive lah eh. So, make sure that you guys, if if those who wants to join, make sure they're positive lah. Jangan, jangan nak join and lepas tu you rasa macam, you know, tak boleh lah ni, tak boleh lah rejection lah whatsoever. So, so if can we, if you can accept rejection, then please join. So, but you, the moment when you accept rejection, you actually basically can learn a lot of stuff. Okay, that's where your approval flow comes inside. And uh, yeah, coming back to another thing that actually I'm also going to be, uh, the, those who's going to join, uh, I, I'll be your leader as well. And I'm the one who basically going to guide you from zero to something lah, at least lah eh. Hopefully, kalau you boleh bagi commitment 100%, I, gives you a, I, g- I can give you 101%. Okay, so I'm yeah, I'm one of the director of the company. We have a few directors there. Each directors kita ada role role kita sendiri. We have training, we have recruitment. Okay, we have all that. And uh, yeah, so my website is as below. Uh, you can see my company website. Okay, but if you're going to join me personally under my direct team, you please PM me personally with my phone number. Ataupun you can email me anything your resume or whatsoever. That's all for today. I had a very good session with you guys. So Zaidi, anything back okay. to you? Thank you very much uh, bro. So terima kasih banyak-banyak because uh, coming this morning so sharing your experience, sharing with the rest of the of the penonton and uh, others you know. So uh, thank you sekali lagi untuk bagi some opportunity uh, opportunity you know, peluang uh, terutama bagi ialah sekarang ni uh, bagi mereka yang terkesan dan uh, peluang ni terbuka pada semua kalau siapa yang menonton ni rasa tak terkesan tak apa okey tapi boleh bagi tahu orang lain okey yang mana you tahu yang terkesan yang memerlukan pekerjaan dan so on perlukan bimbingan boleh join uh, tuan uh, Amrish uh, dan syarikat beliau sebab ini adalah industri yang sedang berkembang okey uh, seperti mana berkembang era yang Malaysia 
uh, dalam masa tujuh bulan lagi kita expected akan ada you know rakyat Malaysia yang baru-baru <laughs> Okay, ha, kan biasalah during the lockdown tanya benda aktiviti yang boleh buat kan ha, So, uh, you know, kita expect tujuh lapan bulan lagi, you know uh, Itulah dia, selamat datang ke Malaysia So, berkembangnya rakyat Malaysia uh, Begitu juga lah berkembangnya pasaran hantan dan sebagainya Jadi servis-servis atau perkhidmatan macam ni Diperlukan akan datang insyaAllah So, thank you very much bro for coming yeah, by. Yeah, so, yeah. live like shout out uh, kepada mereka yang nak dapatkan buku forensik kewangan saya yang seperti yang tertera di uh, screen anda dekat bawah tu. Okay, nak dapatkan saya percuma, tolong uh, share video ni, tolong tag kawan-kawan banyak-banyak, screenshot letak di uh, ruangan komen, admin saya akan pilih uh, pemenang yang yang bertuah. Okay, so untuk itu, terima kasih sekali lagi bro. So, So yeah, thank you, thank you again, Tuan Zaidi, uh, for basically inviting me for this session. I hope that through this session, ramai orang dapat at least get a little bit of information. And please stay touch with us, uh, maybe sebab kita boleh bagi information information yang terkini. And uh, again, thank you so much for your time to spend the nearly two hours with us. And I really appreciate that so much. And I'm very humble to be invited again for this live session. And um, last but not least, uh, please. Uh, most important, take care of your financial portfolio. Uh, yang mana ada business, please declare your tax. Yang mana tak ada documents, please adakan dia punya documents. Okay, yang mana tak contribute EPF, please contribute your EPF. All these are very essential. Benda-benda ni semua penting. So please do the basic needs and that what that's what is going to make your journey much more smoother untuk untuk kita apply loan. Okay, so thank right. you so much again. I'm so happy to see all of you all. Selamat berpuasa and raya is all the way. And uh, selamat Hari Raya Idul Fitri as well. Okay, maaf saya batin. Alright, thanks. Thanks bro. Okay, bagi mereka yang nak dapatkan masuk ke grup uh, Telegram dan uh, channel Telegram, saya dah letakkan deskripsi uh, di, di kawasan uh, description video ni. So, lepas habis tengok live ni, boleh klik dan dan join je. Boleh tengok description video. Okay, untuk itu saya ucapkan terima kasih kepada semua kerana menghadiri. Uh, kita jumpa untuk sesi akan datang uh, insyaAllah uh, minggu depan dah raya so definitely bukan minggu depan mungkin seminggu sepah raya kita akan ada sesi lagi uh, untuk itu Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Wabdaya Taufiq Wadaya kita jumpa lagi akan datang bye alright bye